This is the story of how my son Adam unlocked a secret that had been hiding in my family for generations, hepatitis B. Hi, I'm Bini. Five years ago, my life turned upside down when I found out I had hepatitis B. This is my story and what I went through to treat it. I'm Van, I'm from Vietnam, and I've also got hepatitis B. Uh, my story is about how I've learned to live with this disease and, uh, and keep control of it. Hi, I'm Dr Miriam Levy. I treat patients with hepatitis B infection and I'd like to talk to you today about this virus. This is not meant to replace a visit to your specialist. It's just to help you understand more about the disease, its treatment and protecting others. Hepatitis B, or HBV as it's often called, is the most common liver infection in the world. The virus causes inflammation in the liver and after many years can scar the liver. This then leads to serious complications such as liver cancer and other diseases, including liver failure. I invite you to listen to these stories about how hepatitis B may affect you or a loved one. Most of my family was born in China. This is my husband, Jack. And my two children, Mary, who is now 11, and Adam, who is five. We immigrated to Sydney 10 years ago when Mary was one year old. Jocelyn Lin, I have your uh, results here. I became pregnant with Adam five years ago. At the time, my doctor said all pregnant women in Australia had to have some routine blood tests. That's when it all started, five years ago. And your blood test showed you have a hepatitis B virus. But I don't feel sick. It's very common to have a hepatitis B and not have any symptoms. Hepatitis B is very common in China, and most likely you had the infection all your life without realizing it. How did I catch it? Well, most likely you got the happy uh, from your mother and she was infected because hepatitis B spreads from blood to blood and the virus passes through uh, the brick skin, bricks in the skin and uh, so you would have spread to you from your mother during birth. And when you are a baby, your immune system was not fully developed and was not able to fight the infection. There are other ways hepatitis B is spread from one person to another beside childbirth. Hepatitis B can be spread during unprotected sexual intercourse. Condoms should be worn to protect the other person from hepatitis B and both from other infections. It can also be spread through sharing needles for injecting drug use and by unclean equipment used in tattooing, dentistry or other medical procedures if the equipment is not new or not properly sterilised. This map shows how common hepatitis B is in many countries around the world. In China or Southeast Asian countries such as Vietnam, one in ten people have chronic hepatitis B infection. In these countries, routine vaccination against the disease is not always available. Even if you now live in Australia, the risk that you have hepatitis B infection is the same risk as the country that you were born in. Most people in Australia with hepatitis B were born overseas and had the infection before they came, even though they may not know it. Some Australian-born people, such as Indigenous Australians, also have higher rates of hepatitis B than non-Indigenous Australians. You can be completely protected from getting hepatitis B by being vaccinated before you're exposed to the virus. In Australia and many other parts of the world, all babies receive routine vaccination against hepatitis B. Vaccination is very effective. In Taiwan, for example, where the hepatitis B vaccination is given to all babies, the infection is becoming much less common there. Ming, your daughter 
Mary was born in China. Do you know whether she has been vaccinated? No, she hasn't. Well, it's very important that uh, we test Mary. We should also test other family members as well, such as your mother, your father, brothers and sisters, or anyone else born overseas. What do we mean when we talk about chronic hepatitis B? If someone has had the infection for more than six months, this is known as chronic hepatitis B. If chronic hepatitis B infection starts when you are a baby or a toddler, it may last a lifetime. This is very different to catching hepatitis B when you are older. When adults catch hepatitis B, they can usually get rid of it themselves before it becomes chronic. This is because their immune system is stronger. Daniel most likely caught the disease as a child from a non-sterile medical procedure overseas or from his mother, but sometimes we can't be sure. Five years ago, I found out I had hepatitis B. What a shock that was. I found out I had hepatitis B when I came to Australia. My doctor called me with the test results. Thanks. Can I be vaccinated now? Well, unfortunately not. That's a common misconception. The vaccine doesn't work when you've already been infected with hepatitis B virus. I soon found that there was a lot of prejudice about hepatitis B. People don't understand it, so they're afraid. Some think they can catch it by touching me or shaking hands. I'm worried about how to tell a girl if we go out together. If you have hepatitis B, it's important that you're truthful and do not put your sexual partner at risk. They could be vaccinated. Talk to your doctor about precautions. When my daughter Mary was tested and they found she had hepatitis B, many of her friends were scared. The parents of her friends would not let their children come and eat at her house. It was so embarrassing and sad. Hepatitis B does not spread by sharing food, sharing cutlery, kissing, shaking hands or working together because there's no break in the skin for the infection to get in. There's no need to use plastic knives or forks. People can't catch it that way. There are many other things about Hepatitis B that you may hear that are simply not true. If you have questions, ask your doctor for the facts. Are you wondering what Hepatitis B does to your body? Hepatitis B is a germ that likes to live in the liver. The liver is the largest organ in the body and it has many functions, including removing toxins, digesting and storing food, and making things that you need. Hepatitis B virus goes into the liver and the liver can get damaged and scarred when your body tries to get rid of the infection. Scarring can affect the shape of the liver, which then also affects its function. For example, blood doesn't flow normally, pressure can build up, and this can result in internal bleeding. When the scarring becomes widespread in the liver, we call this cirrhosis. Liver cirrhosis can lead to problems such as tiredness, internal bleeding, jaundice, that is turning yellow, swollen ankles, swollen abdomen, and mental confusion. Without treatment, hepatitis B may cause liver cancer and liver failure. The main purpose of this DVD is to help you understand how hepatitis B does not affect everybody the same way. It causes damage at some stages and not others. There are five different phases of hepatitis B infection and these roughly correspond to different ages in life. We name these five phases silent, damage, control, escape and clear. The five phases are quite complicated, so to make it easier to understand, we have an illustration using a bear to represent hepatitis B infection. The first phase is called silent, 
in which the hepatitis B is there, often in large amounts, but it's staying silent. In this phase, it's like a bear hibernating in its cave. It's there, but for the moment, there is no threat. Doctors may refer to this silent phase as the immune tolerant phase, because the immune system is not responding to the infection at this time. Silent phase occurs from birth and usually lasts until age 20 or 30. In silent, although there might be billions of copies of virus in the liver and blood, it is not causing any damage or symptoms. Ming, both you and your daughter Mary are... Mary and her mother Ming are in the silent phase. Both have carried the disease since birth. Like other women, Ming only found out she had the disease when she was tested during pregnancy. All pregnant women in Australia must be tested because of the need to vaccinate the babies shortly after birth. If you are pregnant and have hepatitis B infection, it's important to be assessed by your specialist to determine if there's anything additional you should do to protect your baby from getting the infection. What about my baby? Well, shortly after you give birth, your baby will be given two special uh, hepatitis B vaccinations. Most babies will be protected and will not catch the infection. The next phase is damage phase, in which your body's immune system begins to fight back. Your doctor may call this damage, the immune clearance phase, as your body's immune system is fighting to clear the body of the infection. It's as if the sleeping bear has come out of hibernation and your body is fighting it. Severe liver damage can occur, although there are usually no symptoms. You will only know if you've entered this phase if you have a blood test. Occasionally, loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, tiredness, abdominal pain, and sometimes jaundice can occur. Not everyone needs treatment at this time. Sometimes the body controls the infection without any help from medicines. Van is in the damage phase. He has regular blood tests and his GP keeps a close eye on what is happening to his liver test results. The tests are abnormal and the family doctor is watching carefully. If the test results show that the virus is coming under control, then he may not need any treatment. If things don't settle down, he will need to see a specialist. Daniel is also in the damage or immune clearance phase. After several months of monitoring, the liver tests are getting worse. So Daniel, your liver tests are abnormal and they're not settling and that means you're in the damage phase of the disease. And really that means I think that you need to see a liver specialist to be considered for further treatment. After damage comes control. The body begins to control the infection. Your doctor may call this the immune control phase because the immune system has got the infection under control. The bear, hepatitis B, has been put in a cage. The bear is still there in the body, but under control. The liver tests have returned to normal and the virus levels are low. The immune system has stopped fighting the virus and so no further damage is being done to the liver during this phase. The body's immune system controls the infection. Entering control is a good thing because it means the damage phase is over. People in the control phase can be anywhere between 30 and 80 years old. I talked to my family and told them the doctor recommended everyone get tested for the hepatitis B virus. Some took a bit of convincing. I explained that they might have hepatitis B but not have any symptoms and that it was better to find out now than to find out when it was too late. I wasn't really surprised when the test results showed that others in my family who were born in China had hepatitis B. The test results showed that Ming's mother, Mei, 
was in the control phase. She was referred to us at the liver clinic. May, your results show that you've had hepatitis B for a long time, probably even 50 years, but it's come under control now. Your liver function tests have settled down to normal. Does that mean I have got rid of the hepatitis B? No, look, unfortunately not. The body um, can't usually clear the infection completely, but it's under control. It's kind of like this image of the, the bear, you see. Uh, it's like the bear or the hepatitis B virus is under control. Your body's actually stopped fighting the virus now and the damage has settled down and the virus levels are low and your liver function tests are normal. The important thing that we have to do now is to see how much damage your liver has had up to this point. So we need to do some further tests for that. I see. Even though things seem under control, it's important to keep having checkups with your family doctor. If your liver is very scarred, treatment may be helpful to get rid of the last bit of virus. Your liver specialist will help you decide. Sometimes hepatitis B gets out of control again, moving into a phase called escape, where the liver is attacked and damaged again. Your doctor may call this the immune escape phase. Markers of infection start to rise. Damage to the liver can start to occur again, which is shown through abnormal liver function blood tests. This escape phase is seen in older people in whom the liver may be more susceptible to damage, especially if it's been damaged before. In this way, we discover that Ming's father Ewan was in the escape phase. He had no symptoms. I've got the interpreter here so that um, to make sure that you're understanding what I'm saying. You understand what the doctor said? I understand. You understand? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, let me know. Look, you've had the hepatitis B for a long time, and although you haven't had any symptoms, it's probably been damaging your liver a lot. Um, the immune system doesn't have it under control anymore. And you know, it's possible that you might have developed liver cirrhosis. When the liver is severely scarred, we call it liver cirrhosis. Then the function of the liver will begin to be affected. Liver cancer can occur in people with hepatitis B infection, especially in older people, those with cirrhosis, and those with a family history of liver cancer. If you have chronic hepatitis B, regular checkups are required using ultrasound and blood tests. These are very important ways to tell if a very small cancer is starting to grow. Your liver cancer is actually. Ming's small. father Ewan had a routine ultrasound test that showed he had a very small liver cancer. He was lucky that we found the cancer so early. But for you, your cancer is small and there's a lot of different treatments that are effective that we might be able to offer you. If you develop any other type of cancer, you must tell your cancer specialist about your hepatitis B. This is because chemotherapy can weaken your immune system and in turn, this will affect your body's ability to keep the hepatitis B under control. The last phase, clear represents a cure from hepatitis B infection. Hepatitis B will be cleared completely. You can see in the illustration, the bear is dead. Clear is more likely to happen if you contract the infection as an adult. When you get the infection as a child, it is uncommon to clear it completely, even with treatment. Once you've discovered you have hepatitis B, what test should you have? Because hepatitis B infection and liver cancer often carry no symptoms, blood tests and imaging such as ultrasound CT or MRI scan, liver biopsy and fibro scan are all important tests your doctor may use to assess your liver health. I just want to show you the blood test results. These tests will answer what phase of infection you were in and whether you have cirrhosis 
or liver cancer. Blood tests are the first and most important tests that your doctor will organise for you. And that means you carry the virus. Ultrasound is used to see the shape and texture of the liver, and a lump or tumour inside the liver may be seen. It is the best method for regular screening to detect small liver cancers. Ultrasound screening for liver cancer is recommended every 6 to 12 months for the following hepatitis B patients. Men over 40, women over 50, those with cirrhosis and those with a family history of liver cancer, Africans over 20. If you fall into these categories, you need regular screening. Get yourself a diary so you can record all your tests. Make it your business to stay on top of your health records and know when you are due for your next tests. May I'm just um, doing a fibro scan now. Fibro scan is a new non-invasive test that shows how stiff the liver is. If the liver is stiff, that means there's a lot of scarring. Fibroscan provides useful information and in some but not all cases may avoid the need for a liver biopsy in hepatitis B. A liver biopsy involves removing a small sample of tissue from your liver to detect liver problems. It will also tell whether liver cirrhosis is present, although sometimes Fibroscan can provide this information without a biopsy. Uh, Daniel, I think we need to take a liver biopsy to see how much damage your liver has. What's involved in that? A liver biopsy is done uh, through the skin around here. Some local anaesthetic is put in under the skin and then a needle biopsy is quickly put in. The biopsy is about the size of the lead in the lead pencil. There are some risks involved with the procedure, although we aim to minimise these. Biopsy is examined by a pathologist and will show the severity of inflammation, scarring, cirrhosis or any other changes. Some people have a fear of liver biopsy or a cultural objection and will not even see a specialist because of this fear. This could be a bad decision if you actually need to have some treatment. Be open with your doctors about your fears. You won't be the first person in this situation and you and your specialist can plan a solution if you are willing to let them know how you feel. How is hepatitis B treated? There are very effective, safe treatments for people with hepatitis B infection. Not everyone needs treatment immediately. It depends what phase you're in and how much damaged your liver is. An important time to have treatment is in the damage phase to protect your liver from damage. There are two types of treatment. The first is called pegylated interferon, which is given as an injection once a week for a year. The other type of therapy is direct antiviral medicines taken as tablets by mouth. These work directly against the virus. There are different choices in this group. Hi, good morning. Good morning. How Let's talk you? first about pegylated interferon. Interferon strengthens the immune system to fight infections. Daniel was in the damage phase. After discussion with his doctor, he decided to try pegylated interferon treatment. He made this choice as he only had to be on treatment once a week for one year. Will the treatment cure me of hepatitis B? Treatment's going to help uh, you fight the infection and that's going to prevent scarring and reduce the chance of developing a liver cancer. You've chosen to have interferon for 12 months. Um, I want to make sure that you understand how you take it, what the side effects are and what are the chances that it's going to work because it doesn't work for everyone. How do I take it? It's given by injection once a week for a year. And I agree with your choice because it means that you're going to have a fixed duration of treatment instead of taking medicines for a long time. The nurses are going to show you how to give yourself the injections. And now we need to get your dose right. And at a 45 degree angle, so for me, and 
It will interfere on work. If successful, interferon can result in long-lasting control of the infection, even after therapy is stopped. About one in three patients who use interferon move into the control phase. Moving to clear occurs only occasionally. The second form of treatment for hepatitis B is tablets. Tablets have been used safely and effectively for at least five years. You will need to be monitored, usually every three months, to ensure the tablets are working. Compliance, that means taking the tablets every day, is critical to how well they work. Ming's father, Ewan, was recommended the antiviral tablets. These tablets are very effective at suppressing the virus, but generally only work while you take them. It's very important that you continue to take these medications as you have a lot of liver damage. You must be committed long term. So I have to take them every day? That's right. Don't stop taking your medications even if you feel better or you're planning a holiday or you're too busy to get your next script. This can be very dangerous. The virus is very clever and they figure out a way to escape the effects of the medication and it might stop working altogether. I understand. If you do forget to take some of your medication, just be honest with us in the clinic. Our doctors will be able to look after you better if they know what's going on. Antiviral tablet at the end of your pregnancy. Ming decided to take antiviral medicines during the last two months of her pregnancy to protect the baby from catching hepatitis Ming, B. Your tests show that your viral load in your blood is actually very high, and so you've got a, about a one in ten chance of passing on the hepatitis B to your baby, even if your baby's vaccinated. There is a role for taking uh, tablets, antiviral tablets, in the last few weeks of your pregnancy. Um, that will re reduce the risk of passing hepatitis B on to your baby. You have to understand that that is not uh, medicines for you, the medicines that you'll be taking that to protect the baby. Um, I'd really like to discuss the risks and the benefits of doing that, as it's not standard care. I read in the newspaper about Chinese medicine. Uh, can I take Chinese medicine to treat? Well, there's no harm to try. People with hepatitis B often use traditional herbal or Chinese medicines for many reasons. Sometimes these can upset your liver. Western doctors usually are unable to say if alternative medicines are helpful or not for hepatitis B as there is little research done on them. If you are taking alternative medicines, please let your specialist know. They usually won't mind, but may need to be alert for allergic reactions or drug interactions. Also do remember that there are other ways that you can protect your liver and your health. Keep a healthy weight with a balanced diet, do regular exercise, avoid drinking too much alcohol. One or two alcoholic drinks a couple of times a week is usually okay, but make sure you have some alcohol-free days. Binge drinking, which means drinking a whole lot on the weekend and not during the week, is in fact the worst way to drink alcohol. Smoking puts you at risk of heart disease, lung cancer and stroke, as well as increasing your risk of liver cancer. Find another way to relax. If you have a lot of liver damage already, it may be better if you avoid alcohol completely. It's also important to keep your weight down as overweight people have fat in their liver, which can irritate the liver in a similar way to alcohol. Five years since finding out about hepatitis B, how have our patients fared? Looking back now, I remember what a shock it was to find out I had hepatitis B. But it's far better to know now than to live in the dark about it. My son Adam did not catch hepatitis B from me. I am so happy he will be free of it all his life. Mary will need to be monitored because she is in the silent phase now but this is likely to change. My mother, Mai, who is in control phase, is being monitored. 
tests showed that her liver was not damaged by the HPV. My father, Yoon, who is in the escape phase, is also being treated for liver cancer, and he is responding well to this. The whole family is committed to regular checkups. It's the only way for us now. So I've been lucky that I found out about hepatitis B in time. I'm still in the damage phase. The uh, doctors have said that I don't need treatment just yet, but if I don't move into control phase soon, then they'll recommend some treatment for me. I've also learned that I need to have regular checkups, so I keep a personal health diary. Uh, that way I can write down the dates of my tests and my results. You know, I, I don't want to miss any. As a result of the interveron treatment, I'm now clear of hepatitis B. So for me, it was actually better that I found out about it, even though I didn't think so at the time. I'll keep getting tested and see what happens next. Your hepatitis infection may move from one phase to another and you will not even know that this change has occurred. Don't wait till you get sick. If you wait, it may be too late. Thanks for listening today. Remember, you're not the only one going through this. Speak to your doctor when you have questions because getting the right information can make all the difference. <laughs>